Today I've got some all new sweet honeybee DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome back. The first project is going to be a beehive door decor. Did I mention these things are coming from the Dollar Tree? That's right. We're going to start off with a little pencil. I've got this beehive frame from the Dollar Tree. Some fabric that I thrifted and a piece of foam board. Mine's a trifold, but I'll cut it down, but you can get yours at Dollar Tree. We're gonna take the tags off here, of course. You can see that it's not completely painted. That doesn't bother me, but if you need to, you can go ahead and get some yellow spray paint and fix that up, or maybe even acrylic. To make it a little easier while I trace this so I don't move it around, I'm just gonna use a little bit of clear tape and just tape it across each one of those little ribs and that way there's no tape on the outside that interferes with the shape that I'm tracing. Very easy. Once you get that done, you can just pop it off. I did break one of my rings, so be careful when you do that. And then this is a shape you get. You can use your cutting mat and a X-Acto knife if you want to, or one of those little finger knife thingies. But I went ahead and grabbed up my scissors because I was catching heck with that little knife. And the scissors work, it just takes a little bit longer. And I'm trying to get the big pieces out of the way. You can hack at it and then do a little bit of a nicer cut along the edges. Just kind of remove that bulk. So there's the shape. It is not completely perfect. It's got little jagged cut marks in it. I'm just gonna grab my sanding foam block here and just lightly go right over all of these edges. That'll get that extra paper off. The foam that's on the inside will shear off of there as well and just give us a little bit of a smoother surface to work with. You could use an emery board to do this too if you wanted, or even a piece of sand and paper, whatever. So you can see the little pieces that have fallen down on the bottom, and here's our shape, and it fits perfectly. We're gonna just set the form aside, the wreath form, and we're gonna start working on the paper backing or the foam board backing. We want to make this stiff. So we're going to Mod Podge it down onto the foam board. I'm using quite a bit on a sponge brush so that I get a thick application. When you use fabric, you want to get enough glue so that it kind of saturates through. You wouldn't want to do this if you were using tissue paper or something. You're probably not going to find this fabric at Dollar Tree as I didn't either, but you can find some there's white with the little black bee prints with their farmhouse fabrics. If you can find that, that would be really nice here too. Maybe give you something a little more neutral, but I happen to like that color, that beautiful color in the summer and going into fall. So this is just the way I like it. I'm gonna go back over while it's still wet and go over all of the edges, making sure that it's going to dry so it'll be crispy even on the fabric. It'll be be able to cut it just like we would uh, cut in paper, ideally. And you can see it kind of gives it a milky looking finish. I'm using matte, but you can use whatever Mod Podge that you like to use on this. I just like the matte finish. While it's still wet, I'm going to trim off the excess to make it a little bit easier for me the next go around. Once it's dry, this is how it's going to look. Nice and, nice and crisp again, the colors. And I'm gonna go around here and cut these out with my small scissors. Now, I found that if I just cut toward my centers like this, and then I can kind of uh, then go along the curve without having to worry about not getting good corners. So see, now I can just go over this section and there's our little bump. And you can do that all the way around if it's easier for you. Once that's done, I'm going to take my E6000, and I do use hot glue too, but you just can't see it here, and these little clamps that came from Dollar Tree to help us hold everything in place. So we're going to take that frame back off of there, and I'm going to go around the edges as close as I can get to the edge with this E6000. I'm just going to make some smears here and there. This uh, comes out like in a little bubble and the top is clogged up, so I just use a stick and use it this way. And I know you can't see, but I'm going close to the edges because the edges are where the frame is gonna touch. And then after I get that done, I'm gonna put down the frame back on top of it. 
and hold it in place with the clamps. And you'll see me doing that here. Gonna make sure I got it exactly in the right position. It's shaped a little differently on the top and the bottom, so just making sure that it's right and back in the right spot. These clamps can help hold it in place. And then I'll go around and all the sections where I did not put the E6000, I'm gonna go around that with some hot glue. Just on the outside, not on the inside. And that's gonna help hold it in place until our E6000 is dry. Once it is all dry, you can see here, it works perfectly. And I did not glue down any of the middle sections because I knew I wanted to add a little something extra. I'm just going in here with my scissors and trimming up a little bit of extra fra fabric that's, you know, little ragged pieces. I'm just gonna go ahead and trim it up on the front, make it look nice and neat. You can go over that with black or yellow paint if you wanted to. I'm just gonna reuse a tie that I got off of something else. And I'm going to put that in the back. You want one that's, a, that's wide enough that if you put a bow on here, the bow is going to cause the weight to shift to the other side. So if you're going to use a bow, you might want to consider um, how you put your hanger on the back of this. Might want to make one that goes side to side, in other words. So we'll give that a chance to dry, and while it is, we're going to work on a bow. You don't have to use a bow at all if you prefer to not use a boat, you certainly don't have to, but I really wanted to in this um, project. And uh, uh, we'll be using a variety of ribbons. So this one is a thrifted ribbon that I pulled off something else um, at Goodwill. Sometimes I find fragments and that's fine with me. I love that color. And then I have some more. The yellow came from the thrift store also. And then the little sunflower came from the fall clearance or sale last year at Hobby Lobby or last fall season I'll put it that way it's so cute I love it and getting good deals like that man that's I don't always get those good deals because I don't follow them I just kind of happen into the store every now and then and can can find something I like so okay let's get started on this bow this is going to be a funky bow four inch little loops up here you're going to fold it in half, you've got it dovetailed on the ends, and you're going to hold it between your thumb and your forefinger. Again, approximately four inches. You can measure it against the ribbon you already have, or you can keep your ruler down or your cutting mat so you can get them precise if that's what you want to do. I can usually get them about the same by just kind of fooling with the loops. So I'll put my fingers in here and pull them up and I can make one longer if I need to. I can pull them down by the tails and make them shorter. We're using three different types of ribbon and we're going to use two of each one. The more you use, the bigger your bow is going to be. I don't want this bow to completely overwhelm the small size of this, um, this little door hanger we're making. Or you can put it on your wall or wherever you want to put it. It's just bright and sunshiny and summery, and I just love that. I hope y'all like sunflowers as much as I do, because I will be doing sunflowers in the fall also. I sure will, because I love them so much. They're just very rustic to me. The colors and everything, they're so warm. I just love it. All right, so I'm gonna use a zip tie here, but I'm gonna slip a little scrap of a pipe cleaner right down in there and then I'm going to tighten it all the way down and then you can just cut the edge off or the extra off with your little clippers or if you've got some kitchen shears something that can cut through thick items then you could use that too so to fluff out this bow, we're going to make sure if you're going to fluff it upside down, make all your patterns go toward the table because when you flip it over, that'll be the right side, correct? Yes. The idea is to kind of divide up your colors and your patterns so that it is mixed up and pretty and there's a little bit of each little pattern represented in your bow when you look at it. This bow, although we made these pieces about 24 inches, we're gonna be trimming up a little bit on this bow. And so these pieces will not be the same length as did you see them here. 
but you can use, leave yours that way if you would like. So it's kind of easy. It's fluffing out the bow part is just, you know, putting your hands in there and they have wire except for that little sunflower ribbon. They have wire so they stay up there without too much of a problem. So I'm wrapping it around that, I guess it would be almost the center loop there or one of the middle loops and I'm just pulling it to the outside. I want to be able to see the flowers and the bees on the sign. And yeah, some is covered up, but you know, you'll still be able to see that bee toward the top. She's a super cutie. All right, so I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to just nip a little bit, make these a little bit shorter in front of the striped ones that are underneath it. Kind of just playing with it here. If you made your loops and your tails about the same size, then you would have a squattier, wider bow. So just keep that in mind if you decide that that's something that you're, you would rather do. I've decided to put a little loop in the middle because it's bothering me that I can still see my little zip tie. So I'm just going to make a little loop and put it in the center. But if you are somebody who knows how to make bows, then you know what to do without um, running into this issue. I'm not a professional. I like to remind people of that every now and then. Um, I don't know everything and I don't pretend that I do. <laughs> you know, I'm self-taught and I uh, just try to bring you the things that work for me and then you can do things your own way. That's what we do on this channel. We make it our own. See how that yellow one right there is just a little bit too long? It's trying to be floppy. We're going to cut it a little shorter and it'll stand out a little bit. I'm just wrapping them between my two fingers and pulling them down and a good wired ribbon will hold that curve for you. And that's working pretty good. I think it's cute. I don't think that this piece would have been as cute had we not put that pretty bow on there. But maybe it's just because I'm from the South and we love big bows. Who knows? You can watch my videos on Monday and Thursday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'll see you in the comments. The bee calendar art is going to be our next project. Look at those cute little bees. All right, we're gonna use some Mod Podge. This is not a new idea, definitely. People have done this before, a little Waverly. Antiquing wax, a foam brush, a regular brush. Got some little tumbling tower blocks. Mod Podge little scraper squeegee. And the calendar page. And the back of this one happens to be the sunflowers. This is a box top from a, I don't know, what is that, from cigars or something? A telescope that I got at the thrift store. Love the wood box, love the depth. We're just going to kind of, I'm, I'm just eyeballing it to see about how much I need to remove. And I'm just using my rotary cutter here to trim off those pieces until the size is what we need to stick inside of that lid so we can make it into a sign. To put it down, I am just going to use some Mod Podge and a brush. You don't have to use this. You can use the glue stick method here if you want to. Uh, you could use double stick tape if you wanted to use this again. But I'm using that Mod Podge and I'm using it with a thicker paper. So what you see that I'm going to be using is not your the regular calendar page with the numbers on the back. This is actually the back of the cover. So it's a little bit thicker and I don't have to worry about all the bubbling and lines and wrinkles and such. I'm just gonna place it down with my hands first. There's a little bit of room on each side of the picture, but I don't, I'm not concerned about that because when it dries, it's just gonna be the wood color and it'll just look like part of the frame. I'm gonna go all the way around, making sure that there's no, no air left in and I'm happy with it. Then I'm going to take that same Mat Mod Podge. I'm going to go over the sides of the wood, the inside where it connects to the, uh, where the picture connects to the sides, and all those little gaps. I want this to be completely the same finish so that it looks like it was intended to be this way. I don't want it to appear as though I put a calendar page in a box top, right? No, that's not what we're going for. So I'm going to take my Intaking Wax antiquing wax and then uh, if you don't have antiquing wax though you could certainly use a brown paint and make your own little stain i'm doing this because i don't want it to be real noticeable it's going to help support the box top so that it will be a standing sign 
Once those are dry, I'm going to use the side that I didn't paint because it's sometimes hard for wax and glue to stick together. And then I'm going to add a little hot glue and quickly flip it over. I'll put one to the left bottom corner, one to the right bottom corner, and then there will be one that's pretty much in the middle. Not measured, so probably not the middle, but close enough. And the color of it kind of matches the wood, and I think it looks good. I think it works for our purpose. Nice and strong. You can see my Mod Podge is still a little bit wet in the corners there. When it dries, it's going to be clear, so that's not a problem. It's not going to leave a mess on your picture. The next project is a bee beaded wreath, also from Dollar Tree. So this is a yard stake that I got very early um, in the season. These are some beaded little wreaths here. I got the black one and then I have a brown one, but I decided to use the black. I've got some chalkboard paint in black and a sunflower yellow, my white chalk paint, and a variety of ribbons from Dollar Tree. I've already broken the stake off of the back, but there's a little bit that remains. It's not going to be a bother right now. We're going to take our tags off. Always wipe down your items so that your paint will stick. I'm going to use the white chalk paint to go over most of the parts of this bee, except where it is most definitely going to be black, which will be the head, the antennas, and all of the legs. We'll let those be black. But this way, the chalk paint will help that yellow that we're going to put on the stripes really pop out, and I won't have to use as many layers. So now we're getting into the black chalk paint. And I'm going to go over everything that's black. The little eyes were bugging me. I said, yep, the eyes were bugging me. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah. I didn't like them, so I wanted to paint over them. And that's what I did here. Once that white is dry and I'm not going to be running back into the black, I'm going to take that beautiful sunflower yellow color and I'm going to put it all over both of the wings. Just like that. Y'all, I am going to be having my grandbaby soon. Yes, yes, yes. Hopefully my daughter will let me share some pictures when the time comes because we are so excited. We are so excited. Tomorrow or the next day, I'm going to be a Nana. Okay, you see how that's bent up a little bit in the back? I'm going to just grab my little pliers here and bend it up just a little bit more so it's almost like a paper clip and it will go right, it'll thread right through the wiring of this wreath and help hold it in place and then of course later we'll make sure that it stays down um, with a little extra a little extra help i'm going to take those same little pliers here make sure that these are squished together so that my beautiful new bee does not go off anywhere these are some artificial flowers that i have they did not come from dollar tree but i'm sure you can find something like wildflowers or something like that that would work I love these little flowers. I've used them in several projects. I'm gonna just kind of fool around with them a little bit, turn everything the way I like them, and then we'll start making a little swag to put on the top of the wreath. I like to twist them around, put their heads, little faces forward. I didn't have any sunflowers where I would have used those here, but I think this is good enough for this project. When we have these little yellow and white flowers that grow all over the place in the wild, so, and I definitely see bees on them, so it works perfect. I think our little transition screens have a little yellow and white flower with bee on it too. So I'm just fluffing a little bit. It's not a bow, but it still needs a little attention. The zip ties hold it in place nicely because I had some of the little branches that were way too small because these are just really scraps that we have left. And then I'll use another zip tie. I'm going to use two of these to keep it from moving back and forth. And I'm going to attach the swag right down on the wreath. My little zip ties also come from Dollar Tree, so if you're looking for some, these are the ones that I use, and I've never had a problem with them breaking while I'm crafting or, or anything like that. So now we want to put something right in the top. Let's start on a bow. You just look at the combinations together, and I'm trying to see which ones I think that I will like the best. And I do like these together. 
So I'm going to pull these out and I'm going to make just a really simple little, uh, it's like the awareness bow. Just make the little awareness sh shape and then squish it down into itself. I like to kind of measure to make sure it's the right size. I don't want it to be too big for that space. So that's what I'm doing here. Then I'm going to cut my tails where they're relatively close in length. You can use a little clip to hold that in place. Here's that same bow again. It's just a tad smaller. All of the three little bows will be sized just a little bit differently than the one next to it. And then you can stack them up accordingly. And really you could do any bow you wanted here. You could skip a bow and just put more flowers in there so that it's not, you know, specifically like a swag. You could do anything like that. Y'all, it's spring break, so my kids are home, so you're probably going to hear a lot of background noise. But you know what? They're in there playing, and they worked really hard this year, and they're both honor roll students, and they got a PlayStation 5. That's right. And now they're in there playing and having a good time with their dad. I don't think you should pay kids for grades, but I don't see anything wrong with rewarding children for working hard. So that's what we did. Okay, so you can see they're all stacked together, and then I'm just going to cut another little piece. This is an option. You can use jute, or you could use a pipe cleaner. Whatever you want to attach your little trio of bows together is fine. I just thought I would try a little bit of the same fabric we were already using, and it works great. So now we got that pattern in the middle, too. Now, the black and yellow ribbon, this plaid one here, don't think it has any wire in it, but the honeycomb there and this bee, they do have wire in them. So that's gonna that's gonna help us keep this looking a little bit better. Make your bows smaller, make your bows bigger, leave the bow off, however you want to do it. I'm just gonna take a little piece of floral wire and go right underneath that knot on the back of the bow. I'm gonna kind of twist it around the middle top here but just between the zip ties and that will hold it in place and you can also use that little wire to make a hanger to twist on the back if you want to do it that way too always fluff out those bows and I had different ideas as to which one I wanted to go wear and it didn't cooperate with me so in the end it'll look a little different than it does now but it's the same bow I had one little flower that fell off. I'm just going to glue it right in the middle. Now you can't even see that I put that other fabric in the middle of that bow. You can't even tell. Now I'm taking the opportunity to look and see about these tails. It's almost like when you're when you cut a hairstyle and you're looking now at the bangs. You got to kind of see what is framing what. And that's kind of what I do. Well, I'm picking up those back pieces and pulling them out, fluffing them out, run your finger through there, fluff it up, curl the ends. Now, to get this bead to stay in position, I'm using some Gorilla Glue. And I'm just going to pile it underneath the entrance where we attached it. And I'm going to put it um, some over the wood beads and across the body of the bead. And I'm sure my bee does not have the proper amount uh, anatomically of stripes and all that, but that's not the goal. You know, that's not the goal. It's a representation. I'm sure the bee should probably have more stripes on his body upward, but this works for me. We're going to leave it like that. So the good thing about these wood beads is um, if you want to tack down your tails where they don't move when you hang them, you can just tack it down and they'll stay there. They'll stay in place. No slipping off. They'll be there till you try to take them off. And then again with fluffing these out, you can kind of feed them up through the flower swag if you wanted to. That would be a good option for you. Okay, so I'm going to take this black, the same black chalkboard paint we already used take most of it off the brush and very very gently I'm just dragging this across the wings to give the detail back to the wings 
very gently dragging very carefully I don't want streaks I only really want the paint to stay on the tops of the wings uh, of the little the veining I guess in the wings you see what a pretty look that is for me that made all the difference in the world but you know what have you ever seen a bee without pollen on its little legs and butt yep the bees around here always have pollen on them so I'm just gonna grab my little stencil brush gonna grab some more of that sunflower yellow and I'm gonna dust his legs his little feet his head and over the black section on his body with a little bit of this to make it look like there's a little bit of pollen you know he's getting he she whichever they're gonna be taking this pollen back to the hive to nourish their babies it's very subtle but I think it does make a difference that's the third project there's our wooden sign we made with a lid and a Dollar Tree calendar page. We used Dollar Tree and thrifted items also for this little beaded wreath. And the same thing here. I had a lot of fun doing these bees and I'm glad that bees and sunflowers are something that my subscribers and viewers like. Because it's close to my heart and I like them as well love working with them I appreciate everybody's patience as we work through the slower time of crafting season I appreciate it every time I get a subscriber a like somebody turns on their notification bell it helps the channel to be shown to other people who would enjoy these just as much you can do these thank you so very much for stopping by again today and i will see you again very soon bye